Hi, my name is James Fitzgerald. I'm just going to go through kind of this fall of the Soviet Union, uh, mainly focusing on Mikhail Gorbachev and his role in it. Um, I chose this part because um, I guess after reading the Armageddon, I averted, I, I was surprised and by myself. Um, I had never really thought of the, how significant the fall of the Soviet Union was in, in terms of how a world power could just completely dissolve relatively within a few months uh, without much violence at all, without really any any problems in that, especially when it was just a con you know a group of pretty different states all together with nuclear arms and mass military capability, and that really just they're like, okay, fine. Um, so that, that surprised me. I never thought of it that way. Um, prior, I, I had thought it wasn't even a revolution because it really wasn't this bloody revolution that we saw in the French and the Russian revolutions, but um, really it's, it's political, uh, social changes um, globally and throughout. Um, changed my mind on that. Um, so I'm going to focus on the Gorbachev because I believe that Gorbachev is really the, he was the main key in, in why that this happened in this this way, and that it was a peaceful, relatively peaceful, um, dissolving of, of one of the largest uh, countries ever to be seen. Um, so 1985, Gorbachev takes control of the you know, Soviet Union. Really what he's looking at is, is that the Soviet Union has fallen behind on every key factor behind the Western societies, their standard of living, education, everything's falling behind. And um, really the, the economy was lagging because it was propped up prior by oil prices um, being high and Russia was prime with oil at that point. Um, but with the falling of the oil prices, this now put large pressure upon the whole society. Um, and so he really goes through and says, uh, let's go ahead and reform and everything and, and maybe loosen up some of our grips, gris, grasp on, uh, on this economy. Um, so it doesn't go away completely from a command economy, but it is a little bit looser. Um, an unintentional consequence of this, though, is that it actually gives some of the republics and the other satellite states more autonomy and it gives them a little bit more control over their own independence. And thus, later down, that kind of trickles, I think, is one of the main keys in allowing those states to dissolve. Um, there's a quote that, that I remember that right now, but um, in the book that, that stated, it was one of the quotes, I think, chapter four, something like that. Um, but it talks about the, the Soviet Union was really just a candy bar ready to be broken up. Um, you know, kind of how those Hershey bars are all kind of, not perforated, but ridged. Um, and I thought that was a that was a good analogy that the Soviet Union, how it was constructed, actually it, it was inevitable that it was kind of going to break up. Um, but back to the reforms, there's also the reform, the alcohol reform. This was another economic disaster, loss in tax revenue, things of that, social issues, health issues. Um, uh, but throughout 1985, Gorbachev was continuing these reforms. And really, in 1987, then suggests the democratization. Um, probably murdered that word, but whatever. Um, which allows future elections kind of to have more than one candidate and a choice of candidates. Here we see kind of the beginning of the dem democratization of the Soviet Union and th those ideals kind of perforating into the society. Um, and also, then, this is, I think, the, the biggest part of what Gorbachev did. In, in, perpetuating the dissolving of the of the Soviet Union intentionally or not I don't I, I, you know I'm not sure but it was pretty much his stance on Glasnost and his, his the idea that the media now has full reign on everything throughout society we see this in North Korea we see this in a lot of states that have uh, want to control their people and they control it through the media we you know um, the media is a great propaganda tool for the state, and yet um, is an equally powerful tool for criticizing it. Um, so once you kind of let go of the glass or the media through Glasnost, it, it kind of starts to put the uh, the grain of independence.
through people's minds. We see this in the movie Brat. Um, it sort of gives when he's walking in through that party. It's almost like a 1970s feel of kind of a renaissance or new ideas. And when you have people together, new ideas formulate. We see also in, in the French Revolution with the women's meetings. Um, I'm blanking on the name. Um, but it, it gives people to express ideas, share ideas. And then that's, that's kind of the, the, the initial um, beginnings of a revolution is when people's ideas are shared. And I think that was a key, big key point uh, is when the, the media and Glasnost that all started. Um, and then shortly thereafter, in 1988, is when we start to see the breakup of the of the Soviet Union. Um, the 1988 is the when the Baltic republics separate. Um, and though they're not large, this is this is sort of a sign of the times to come. Um, and then, really, the, I think also then the nail in the coffin is the when in frustration Gorbachev then decides to create the Congress of People's Deputies. Um, and and it, this this kind of just facilitates, I think, the beginning of the end, um, because within the elections of the Congress of the People's Deputies, we see several different issues. Um, Ukraine has issues with its representatives. It kind of sparks their revolution or not revolution, but their separation from the Union. Um, Poland also. Um, thinks about testing democracy at that point, tests and then it, you know, topples its Communist Party fairly quickly after that. Um, so really to recap then, the, you know, it's, it's the Congress of the People's Deputies um, was the culmination of it, the, which was perpetuated really by the, the policy of Glasnost, allowing the media to then give the um, full reign on criticizing or really anything, just it, it opened up the, the it enlightened the people. Um, and then the reforms um, prior to that as well. Um, and then by 1990, 91, pretty much most of the, the republics are isolated state or um, have, have kind of uh, broken away. And in 91, we see the UN pretty much say the USSR is no longer. Um, and uh, there is a short little August coup, but it's pretty much teethless, and, and they sit outside, and pretty much look at uh, the president at the time, um, uh, Yeltsin, and, and pretty much do nothing. Um, so that's really it. That's kind of a quick synopsis of, of the fall of the Soviet Union, which, uh, if you're looking at it, you really, you know, if you went up and said, hey, the United States is going to dissolve in six months, you'd imagine a pretty big, uh, pretty big war would happen or something like that. But really, in, in the case of the Soviet Union, it was pretty tranquil. But that's it. Thank you very much. Bye.